With relapsed myeloma, when should you modify current therapy as opposed to starting a new one? Most patients who have disease that's becoming uncontrolled and they're trying to see whether they can modify their current regimen, usually the modification of the current regimen is unlikely to be effective. There are two known things that can occur. One is that the addition of dexamethasone can provide some delay in the patient's myeloma and provide a period potentially of disease control with the rest of the regimen staying the same. And with Darzelex, patients can develop progressive disease, and then certain payers will allow us to flip back from monthly Darzelex to weekly Darzelex, and that can sometimes get back disease control. Other changes, such as changing the dose of the imid or changing the dose of the proteasome inhibitor, are less likely to be effective. So that's a great question, uh, and it really does depend on the patient, uh, and it also depends on the patient's disease. Certainly in my practice, one of the guiding principles is try to keep as many drugs available for the patient and many therapies available to the patient as possible. Try to keep as many treatments in the toolbox because for the vast majority of our myeloma patients, it's gonna be a very long fight. Uh, it's gonna be years, and so you don't wanna just waste all your drugs at the beginning or at the end and then not have anything. So the key piece of the strategy that we use for treating myeloma patients is try not to use drug A that will also cause resistance to drug B and drug C. So instead of just becoming resistant to drug A, you've actually knocked out three drugs by using that. So a lot of what we design is that, for example, if a patient looks like they're beginning to relapse and we can add another drug to their current regimen to actually synergize with the current combination. We'll try that first. But a lot of it will actually depend on how quickly the person is relapsing. So if it's a very slow relapse, it looks like the myelomas are getting slower, but they're really still facing a headwind. You know, they're really still struggling to grow. Then the addition of, uh, you know, the replacement of one drug, if you're taking three or four different drugs, replacement of one drug with the next generation of drugs might be the way to go. If somebody is just growing like gangbusters, right? They are just growing like crazy through all three drugs that they're currently on. That really tells us at that point, we really need to switch to something different. And what we wanna do is switch to a treatment that they are probably not going to be resistant to, right? So if, for example, if a person is getting uh, what we call a proteasome inhibitor like Velcade or carfilzomib, and they're just growing through that like crazy, it probably doesn't make any sense to give them another proteasome inhibitor in that same class because that myeloma has already showed pretty good evidence that it's completely resistant to that. So in that case, you would switch to something completely different uh, with the idea that, well, they seem to be resistant to everything that looks like this drug, so let's try something different. So it really does depend on the patient and how their myeloma is doing.